Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Zwift New Zealand National Championships. Riders today are going to be looking to earn for one year a kit for their national championship out on Zwift. I do have with me today Mr. Wesman coming at me all the way over from Australia. Be joining us as a co-commentator commentator on the race day. We've got about six minutes to start of the men's race, 11 minutes to start of the women's race. Wes, how's it going? I'm going good. I think this is going to be a very hot contested race here. We've got Kim Little in there who is a hot favorite, I'd say. Wouldn't he have to be? Yeah, I think Kim, uh, which is surprising me because he also represented over uh, with the UK, but I'm, we'll have to see if he's going to be able to uh, grab that kit. What's new today on the uh, races, actually, is you must be registered with your national governing body, which is a new thing out on Zwift, which is really cool to see that uh, we're starting to get some integrations with real life cycling coming into the verification systems for the racing out on Zwift. But let's take a quick look at the course for today as we are getting into the Watopia Volcano Climb is what riders, uh, climb course is what riders are going to be doing. It's going to be three laps for the men and two laps for the women. Of course, we are going to be starting out on the piers as usual, the Watopia piers, and we're going to have the crazy fast starts as usual. The riders are going to have to ramp up right from the get-go into high waters to hang on to the into the group. On their way down into the underground, though, things are probably going to calm down at this point, and people are just going to be looking for what pack that go they're going to be ending up in. As they head past the Jarvis tree here, as a lot of people call it, they will be heading on over toward the marina. There is a little bit of a climb out of the marina. We might see a couple of attacks, uh, or toward the marina, there's a little climb. We might see a couple attacks over there, and then there are the S-turns. This is a little bit of an uphill gradient at that that point might see a couple tacks in the s turns as you do exit that area down into the old school ruins that head on over toward the volcano and this is where the action really starts though as they head toward the inside of the volcano they're going to be thinking about the climb that'll be coming at them in just a few moments as they do exit the volcano they do take that left hand turn up to the top of the KOM fastest times are right around six minutes or so for the men I think we're gonna be looking at about seven and a half or so for the women so there is the volcano climb where things are most likely going to be deciding factors now back in the national championships was this uh uh, past year for the rest of the world, not the world down under, we saw in the northern hemisphere, a lot of packs still come to the line, actually, regardless of that six to seven, eight minute climb, actually, which was a little bit of surprising. I mean, what do you think the tactics are going to be out there today for the riders? I mean, definitely on paper, looking at this course, you would think that, yeah, it would be quite a small broken up group. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't suspect a big group to arrive at the finish. So I reckon that it's going to be pretty uh, pretty aggressively raced. Obviously, there'll be some riders testing legs early on, sort of just seeing, uh, sort of doing a bit of foxing. Some of the riders, other riders may play it a bit cooler and a bit safer and sort of sit in and, uh, as you would say, uh, virtual wheel sucking, uh, sitting in the in the bunch and making sure they look after their legs. But I no doubt, I reckon there's going to be some strong attacks towards the last part of the racing. I know watching some of the other um, European championships, there was some some strong attacks but whether or not uh, they can hold on to line and, and what, what riders sort of want to continue with that. So it'd be a, definitely a mix of, uh, of uh, the right riders going at the right time. So it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be hotly contested. We actually have a great question coming through here already from Ian Tuck. And he says, is there any way for regular Joes to zoom out to see the terrain like that course description? That's a really great question, actually. There is a couple of different websites out there for what the Watopia Volcano Climb course is like. You can head on over to ZwiftInsider.com. You can also see ZwiftGPS.com. Com, uh, uh, as well but we do have a course uh, description here with the route overview and everything total distance for the men's race will be 42.6 miles 68.4 kilometers total elevation game 2007 feet 612 meters for the women two laps 28.4 miles and 45.6 kilometers and total elevation three uh, 1338 or 408 meters so there is the climb 432 feet it looks like per lap uh, you know, not crazy, more of a puncher's course, I think, there, was looking at the profile here. I mean, not a full-on climb. You can go pretty much VO2 max to the top of that thing, I would think. 
Yeah, absolutely. And this first part of this race is definitely going to be well above threshold for usually at least for the last first three to four minutes. Uh, these races are going to go full lactate and then they're going to get, obviously start to ease into it from there. But I don't imagine that uh, these riders will, yeah, will definitely uh, be taking it out of the gates. Uh, every one of the races on Zwift usually has that same effect. It's sort of like a, I think you've described it a few times, Nathan, as like a cyclocross sort of stuff. Yeah, definitely just like a cyclocross style race, at least from the get-go, the way that they start. And then it is fairly punchy at the times that you do go. I mean, a lot of times, it, it you know, Zwift racing is its own kind of racing. It's got so much mixture of the different disciplines, actually, it feels like to me. The closest thing that I could say is a, a strong mix, though, of... Um, you know, cyclocross and road because of the amount of consistent effort you're doing the entire time because you're on that trainer and the, and the wattage is just a certain wattage all the way through. There isn't a whole lot of sitting in at all. And, uh, well, I mean, even if you are sitting in, you're still about endurance pace or so at that point or even a high endurance pace especially during races so um but yeah we are getting a couple questions about who the favorites are going to be on out here and uh as far as the signups today we will get more and more information as we go from zwiftpower.com actually that is where all the results will be lying as we do go through uh, today, but uh, as we get into this here, it does look like we have quite a few jumping in here. As actually, Quentin LeFay has jumped in, which I think that has to, more to do with uh, a team director in the ears of his um, of his riders. Actually, so people taking this pretty seriously out here today. I think with uh, the team directors and director sportifs, I think, showing up and making sure that their riders have all the information that they can possibly get. So, all right, riders are about to get going here, and it is off to a start here. As the usual, crazy huge wattages, wattages here. Now, Jay Wells now, 8.9 watts per kilogram, as you can see, hammering away, and it looks like up toward the front there it will be Creel then as well, and it will be Pithy here. El Pithy now, 6.1 watts per kilogram, 189 beats, 190 beats per minute already. Wes, this is wow. an insane amount of heart rate right from the get-go, but we do say a Hinton here. I'd be watching out for there. That Speaking of favorites, Hinton mm -hmm. is one who knows how to win races out on Zwift. And Hinton, yeah, you can see his heart is quite low compared to that 190. It's at 152 beats, quite a low cadence there as well out of the gate there. He's back. He's in that strength endurance range there, right down in that 60 RPM. So I'm not sure whether that is his true RPM or whether it's not reading correctly, but that's a low RPM out of the gate. Yeah, I think he might just be grinding away right now, keeping things pretty calm at this point, perhaps. We'll have to see here. 4.1, 4.7 watts per kilogram here coming in from him. But it will be Hayden here now leading things out about 4.2 watts per kilogram, it looks like. No heart rate, though, from this rider. And Zwift Power uh, rules are in. Uh, are in effect out there today. So because of that, any rider that does not have a heart rate monitor on will not be able to contest for the W out there, though. But we do see it looks like a Scott and then Kempton here as well. 4.2 watts per kilogram, 156 beats per minute now. 117 in, and then we're going to start seeing who is going to be making this front group. Already here, we do see R. Wilson here off the back as well as A. O'Donnell. And a lot of riders going to be out here just to be representing the country, I think, today, as well as a lot will be out there to be trying to grab that jersey. We can already see the league group is forming, and I think it's going to be a long day out there for those who have found themselves off the back now. And the other side of it, I just saw a name pop up there, the Zwift Academy winner, Ollie Jones, I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, is racing as well. <laughs> That's Ollie Jones. So I'd be watching out for him. That, I mean... Nathan, I think we... Uh, We'd have to call Ollie out, uh, Zwift Academy winner. So, yeah, definitely has got some firepower there. And, uh, and he's showing it off right off from the, the get-go here. Ollie Jones, 7.2 watts per kilogram right now, trying to make a kick off the front. He's already got the fastest lap out on Potopia right now. He's got the KOM. He's got the orange jersey, and he's sprinting away. C. Smith sees that. Last year's winner of the Team Dimension Data Zwift Academy, currently riding for a pro team because of Zwift Academy, jumping out ahead of the pack. Smith knows that's a threat. Shaw jumps right on it as well there. 6.3 watts per kilogram from him. Kempton's trying to follow 
followed up here. Hayden now 5.2 as well. Now Pithy now 12 watts per kilogram. The orange numbers are flying. I was that. I thought it was gonna be chill. I thought it was just gonna be like everybody's looking. We're not really gonna go anywhere. Uh -oh. This is full on from the get go, Wes. <laughs> We got a uh, hundred meters to go. This looks; these riders are absolutely giving it. Oh, I can see all orange numbers there right now. Ollie has laid the boots in early on. Got the shout out. He was trying. I think he was trying to go under the radar there for a little bit until the name got shouted out. He's like, "Yeah, I'm actually in this bunch, guys." So look out. So <laughs> Ollie stamped his authority. He's got everyone to react, and it looks like everyone's had a bit of a, a shake down of the legs now. So I'm sure that would have produced a bit of lactate for everyone. So it looks like everyone's settling back into a bit of a rhythm here now. And so Ollie has definitely established that he's in this race. And he's going to make this a hard race by the looks of it, Nate. He definitely has, as he has caused Kiwi Race WBR here, as well as N. Kent. We do have Kay Barker now, also off the back, and this is a group that's going to have to work well together to get back on terms here. Kent now 6.2 watts per kilogram. No heart rate from that rider. We won't have to watch out for him too much for the kit, but or for that national jersey, so riders can let him go, but definitely could get involved again and be a factor for how things play out throughout the race now. But there is this lead group now of about 11 or 12 racers, it looks like, up toward the front here. It will be Kempton here, leading things out for SASCC, and then it is Pithy again, up toward the front. Super hierarchy coming from that rider. Uh, it looks like we do have a little bit of rider analysis here coming in, I believe, from Mr. Jonathan Nambit for uh, Ali Jones and Jeff Rooney on some rider stats. Let's get on over toward our race analytics coming from Johnny. Hey Johnny, everyone, yeah, so we've just seen Ollie Jones there. Good, good, I'm doing great, Nathan. Yeah, great to be here. So yeah, we've just seen Ollie Jones there. We're watching him just on the screen uh, pushing up uh, some big watts right at the start of the race on that Cervelo S5, uh, a bike he would actually race uh, for the real team in real life as well. But uh, we look at some stats of Ollie Jones. We see that uh, 22 years old, uh, not not the lightest of, lightest of riders, so not like a pure climber, but he's definitely got some uh, great power. We see that so far, his average race power, that quick uh, five minute start of the race is uh, 371 watts. Uh, but some of the key stats we want to look at is uh, his performance going to be on the climb because, of course, the riders are going to be tackling this uh, volcano uh, KOM climb. So, uh, looking at uh, all these uh, times, uh, the fastest time he's actually got um, is seven minutes, just over seven minutes, going to climb with an average power of 387 watts. Now, that's actually like it's not the fastest of time. The fastest time is actually five minutes 45, that's been recorded on Strava. So, um, some definitely can go you know, a bit faster, and we probably will see him go faster on that today in the race pace. But as a comparison, Ollie, one of the youngest riders out there, we've got Jeff Rooney, who's actually one of the oldest riders and also a very experienced uh, Zwift racer as well. And his time is uh, over 30 seconds uh, quicker up that KM climb than Ollie at 6.33 with a, a higher power of 429. So I think uh, Jeff has definitely raced up there in the past. So uh, Jeff, someone like from New Zealand who's seen racing uh, many years out on Zwift, so someone definitely want to watch out for, as well as Ollie as well there, Nathan. Thanks a lot, Johnny. Great stats coming on through here. Definitely be watching out for Ali. Jeff Rooney as well. Now, we do have the women's race kicking off here. It does look like Pawson here. 181 beats per minute already. Another BRT rider. The Bolt Racing team has showed up as well, racing for the Hellcats here, and it will be Jay Hamilton as well. Smallman is here now trying to hang on to that wheel and L. Daly, but it looks like Daly here is going to be on the solo ride for the uh, duration of the race, perhaps but it is three off the front for the women's race right now. 4.8 watts per kilogram, and Pawson might find herself in a solo TT for the duration of this race. She's only going to have two or three riders, actually, to contend with. So it's a little bit smaller field out there for the Women's New Zealand National Championship, but that still doesn't... That's, it's still, I think, going to be an exciting race between these two. And no matter what, showing up and grabbing that ja that championship jersey is going to be super important. So Pawson here, though, is going to have her work cut out for her. She thinks she's going to be getting off the front here and breaking the rest of the riders early on for that TT. You think that's probably going to be the uh, the tactic here, it looks like, from Pawson. Having a smaller feel, was that's definitely an mm -hmm. easier tactic to take. It definitely is an easier tactic. I mean, it's still 48 kilometers in length for the women. So it's it's a long TT on your own if you're, if you're solo. So it's probably a smart move here to, to work together and probably not go solo uh, you know, this far out you know, with 48 kilometers of what would be, what would be 1.6 in now. So still a fair distance to cover there, Nate. So yeah, wise move to stick together there. And then if you sort of, if you are in any doubt of yourself, uh, you know, that you aren't a better sprinter or you aren't as punchy as the other rider, that's when you'd be starting to think about that towards the tail end of the race to distance yourself. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. So there is a lot of riding to go here. That's for sure. It looks like it's going to be a battle between these two women. It is Poss and Still throwing down 4.8, 5.0 watts per kilogram on the front, trying to break Hamilton. But as you can see, just like in real life, Hamilton here sitting on and having that BRT name in her name, you know, in her name there, it tells me she's an experienced rider. I think the uh, this rider is sitting in 2.2 watts per kilogram, as you can see. She knows what she's doing. She's going to let Pawson do all the work here. And look at how much less she's working, Wes. It is... Three, you know, three watts per kilogram, two point five watts per kilogram, sitting in same speed. I mean, fairly similar here. It looks like to what it's like in real life. Absolutely, yeah. You get that that full on effect, and that virtual draft does make a lot of difference. And if you're an experienced rider, then you certainly know that and make use of that. You know, going to the to the front and taking turns. You sometimes the other riders will actually slow down a little bit, either Nathan, to make the other person come through. Uh, for a turn like you would in real life you'd start to pull over off and even you can flick the elbow uh, as well Nathan I know if you've ever ever had to pull that maneuver out of course all the time you know I think <laughs> flicking the elbow is probably one of the, 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 the most used maneuvers by Nathan out on course I get I definitely have a lot of why aren't you pulling why aren't you doing any getting and you know it's, it's all my own little ego getting in the way in the middle of racing but I mean it, it just is a testament to how much like how real the racing is because the same frustrations, the same passions, the same, like, what are you doing? The throwing the arm in the air, the, the elbows, you know, the elbow, come on, pull on through. It comes out while you're sitting on your trainer at home, racing these people virtually. It's absolutely amazing how much you can get into it out on Zwift. Wes, what about you? I mean, you throwing some elbows out there as well? You know, I, I'm actually, I've, I've been a little bit, even a little bit cocky in that I've done the old, wave and then took off and attacked <laughs> i was away with, uh, with, with nadzi and nadzi and a few other guys so i was confident i had some uh, wolfpack uh, teammates and uh yeah i put up the hand give them a wave and then i sort of decided to launch i'm sure we'll probably see ollie jones uh do the same sort of thing towards the end of this race uh, i'm sure he wants to go solo yeah, speaking of Ali here, we do have a little bit of interaction coming from Facebook. If you do want to interact with the broadcast, go ahead and chat with us, ask some questions with us over on the Facebook post. So it's Facebook post, or you can tweet at us as well on Twitter, and uh, we will be able to bring that in. So uh, go ahead and tweet at Z Commuter Live, at Z Commuter Live as well, and you will be able to bring that into the broadcast. But Quentin LeFay, he is the director of sportif from Vision, who I believe Ali and a few others are riding for in game at least. Um, and uh, he says, Whoop, Whoop, Nathan Wes are back, not giving anything away, but the Vision cycling team car is full gas as well. So uh, pretty cool to see uh, that Quentin is definitely out there. Uh, given some tips and hints and watching the race from the camera view to tell riders when to go and how to interact. I wonder how many out there, if you are out there as a director sportif right now, you are uh, in the ears of your uh, teammates during the race here. Let us know. We'd love to know if there's others out there that are also, you know, given some tactics and strategy throughout the race. You know, uh, Wes, I know that you're part of a couple teams, uh, at least uh, the, the, the Wolf Pack is uh, one of your main teams out there. Do you guys do any of that, like coaching or like messaging during races? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that uh, for Aaron Dunn and, and the Wolfpack crew for the Australian Championships that are coming up at 10 o'clock Australian East 10 time, I'm pretty sure they've got a Discord channel set up now, so they're they're able to, to chat amongst themselves. So they're able to give instructions. Uh, they were using like a, just a messenger service, but through uh, just through Facebook. But with that, obviously, uh, you get quite sweaty during the racing and that as well. So it's it's easy about it out to yell at each other uh, through Discord and sort of pant and puff and see if they can make out uh, each other in amongst the uh, the whining noises of the of their smart trains. <laughs> Yeah, you know, Discord is definitely a huge help when it comes to live communication, the same way that you would have a race radio on during a, uh, a race in the Peloton and know what's going on between the riders at what times. A lot of riders have figured out that in the same way in the gaming world during Overwatch tournaments or World of Warcraft raids or whatever, people would be doing uh, interactions online in that live environment they found that the tactics during racing the communication during ra racing on discord has helped or any kind of live communication audio communication uh, channels 
help a ton. It does look like we're about to start in, though, to the first climb here in just a moment. We do see three to go, three to go out there. And we do have a front group now of about 10. J. Wells just trying to hang on here. It looks like 156 beats per minute. Maybe not too much of a bother for him. Maybe just a little lax there for a second, trying to save some energy. At 155, you know, I think Wells was a lot higher from the start of the race. So I think he's doing just fine here. Smith here is sitting in 11th place for innovation. Speaking of teams showing up, though, it is Shaw, Hinton, and Smith, all from New Zealand. Three riders from innovation, actually, at the front end of this race. How much do you think team tactics, then, are going to play out here if they all make it up over the top and they start isolating riders? I could give, uh, you know, team innovation here might have a lot more of the odds in their favor, Wes. Yeah, and that's where this team role play and certainly some of these riders will be looking to commit to the captain and their leader and we'll clearly see that unfold uh, in this next part of the race once uh, once we go start going up these climbs and we see who's left, you're going to see who's going to go to the front and push it once, uh, once those gaps start to open. So then we can sort of judge a clear leader, but then sometimes, uh, you know, I've seen Ollie work for some of his teammates and then still win the sprint. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it, it can flick around as well. So it'll be interesting to see who works for who, but I'm sure that they have that worked out. And also things change on course too. So, you know, there, some of the riders may, may say, I know, you know, being part of the pro teams when you, you, you may be the key rider for that race, but you may have uh, bad legs on that day. So it, it all can unfold very quickly and very differently. You may have been in the break earlier on or stirring things up early like Ollie was, and then, uh, maybe you know, bonk all together or something like uh, something might else happen as well. Mechanical as well can happen too. So this race is never over till it's over, Nathan. That's that's one thing that, uh, that every race, uh, whether it's virtual or in real life, you race it to the finish line. That's for sure. You know, I do think it is innovation, though, with the advantage here. We'll have to see how it ends up playing out here. There's lots that can still happen. Lots of racing, though to come here so now it does look like uh Pawson was able to get that break that we were speaking about earlier she's been hammering away it was 5.0 5.0 for a while now 4.4 watts begin but look at that heart rate 186 beats per minute absolutely killing herself it looks like here out on course to try and hold on to this uh hold on to this gap now so Pawson now 4.0 watts per kilogram off the front and it looks like the brt rider uh hamilton had to just eventually let her go here. 3.0 watts per going coming from Hamilton. It looks like this is going to be the one-two situation. Dali is here as well. 3.4 watts per going. We're going to be hanging out for third. So this is one, two, three in the Zwift National Championships for New Zealand. Most likely going to be this uh, finishing. But here's the thing. There's a lot of racing to go here. Pawson's got to hold on to this kind of pace uh, for the duration. And Hamilton here now from the BRT Hellcats, you know, don't throw in the towel to any of these riders because anything can happen, as Wes was just saying. You know, there could be a mechanic. There could be all, you know, we wouldn't want that on anybody. But And also, who qualifies? There is the reality of who can actually win the national championship. So get across the line, see where the, uh, see where the results end up and finish up at the end of the day. Uh, looking here, a little bit of chatter here coming from the social media integration here. Uh, Matt Yankow coming, say, coming through saying, haven't been beat by the innovation boys out there all year. I have to go with them for the win. You know, I definitely be watching out for them, but there is the reality. Ali Jones, you know, I don't know. He is a super strong rider and uh, proven himself time and again out there. We'll have to see how things do turn out. The boys are about to start their climb up and over the top of the climb here. First time over the top here. We do have Kempton up to the front. Now Hayden, though, leading things out. 5.5 watts per kilogram, but no heart rate on him. So they do, they do not have to chase him, then, actually, if they do not want to. They could use him as a little bit of an autobus on the front here, but it will be Scott now. 3.9 watts per kilogram, 178 per minute. Sean, innovation. Just setting a steady tempo here. Now backing off. And interesting to see, it's not full-on attacks here. Just steady efforts here. And I think on the first time over the top, it's going to be a little testing of the legs, but not the full-on attacks. Mm -hmm. I think it's definitely going to be yeah. set it at that higher threshold, see who can hang on, Wes. Absolutely. Yeah, it's only, we're only 12 kilometers in as well, so I'm sure... 
after those that shake up now we're going to establish sort of group here i think what we're at 11 or 12 riders i think we have left in this front group now so obviously these are the stronger riders that are going to stay here together i can't see anyone doing any uh probably attacks this time up there like you said Nathan, most likely i think they're going to be pushing to a little bit of threshold and if they do do if there are any uh small attacks it'll only be a little bit of a shake of the legs just to just to stir some fireworks up and that will probably most likely come from someone like ollie jones yeah, I would have to. I would think so. I think he's definitely uh, chomping at the bit a little bit here, waiting for the moment to see what happens. But it is Zwift racing. We've seen time and again. Here's the thing though about Ali, he knows how to Zwift race. He's been doing it for yeah, a long time. Yeah. You know, pros come in and sometimes it's like they don't know what was going on. They didn't know how the draft was working. They didn't know that it was so much like real life where you can't just take a, a you know a flyer off the front and stick it. I mean, that group is gonna catch you even if they're a full whopper kilogram lower in their ability than you, they can chase you down as a group like any other in real life situation. So being an experienced rider, definitely a huge part of this. Now we are seeing a couple of power-ups being popped here. This is going to be a uh, interesting part of the race as well. If it does come down to a sprint finish, it's almost always about that arrow power-up, or I would think it was, I mean, arrow power-up is the one to have, unless you're full on attacking, on the climb mm -hmm. yeah unless unless you're wanting to to launch on the climb you know someone like ollie who is that puncher sort of rider um it makes sense for him to use a featherweight power up um so we probably should explain that a little bit nathan as well like for people that aren't quite familiar with with this with power ups or new to swift racing explain a little bit to me how that works yeah so power-ups all about power-ups the power-ups that you can get out on zwift are found through the lap banners or start finish banners, sprint banners or KOM banners. Inner banner that you go underneath out on Zwift does award a power up if you do not have one already. It goes ahead and cycles through all the different power ups and lands on one as a random numbers game. Like pulling the slots on a slot machine see which one you're going to get. There's a small bonus power-up, which does give you 15 experience points. There's a large bonus power-up, which gives you 250 experience points. Definitely one that a lot of people wanted early on. I remember riding around Jarvis Island during the beta, wanting nothing but large bonus, actually, 250s, because I wanted to open up as much kit as I possibly could. The more experience you gain in, in game, the more kit that you're, you, you open up in the game as well. Uh, there's a couple other ways that you do get uh, kit and game currently uh, to get the Tron bike. You have to climb like crazy, etc. But mainly, those bonuses are about opening up more stuff on Zwift uh, in your bike, jersey, or different kinds of cosmetics. Some of that does help you go faster as well. There are faster bikes for different kinds of disciplines. You can go fast, you know, faster uphill, faster on flats, etc. So, then there is the Aero Boost power up. That is the most powerful power power up in racing for sure. It does increase aerodynamics for 30 seconds. There's the draft, which increases your draft on another rider for 30 seconds, which is kind of a counter at times not a super strong counter but it can counter the arrow power up if it is used in front of you you can jump onto that wheel if they use it too early or you can come around them still you could kind of counter an arrow power up with it but it does increase that draft then there's the lightweight which reduces your weight for 15 seconds obviously the feather power up is for going uphill if you're looking for an attack at those points definitely want to have that one now if you can't get away from the pack though that arrow power up is where it's at so the climbers, I think, was are going to be definitely interested in the lightweight power up, but you know that feather power up. I'm not sure it's too many are envying anybody who has one, as that aero boost almost always can mm -hmm. counter anything out there. Yeah, certainly. Even yeah, exactly, Nathan. Even on the climb with that aero boost, it does uh, have a have a really great effect. So. Those are the two that you'd be definitely looking for out on course. Uh, you know, obviously, if you don't get the arrow power up, then you know, it's sweet a bit, uh, bit of sweet, sorry, uh, with the featherweight one as well. Uh, judging that you're a climber, that will suit you well. But if you're not, obviously, you can still be an advantage to try and stay with that pack, Nathan. So you can use power ups the other way as well to your what you're not, your strengths aren't maybe uh, climbing. Then you could use that to maybe stay with the likes of Ollie. Looks like Ollie's stretching the legs out here as well. One of the other riders in front there. Too. So it looks like there's a little bit of a gap opening here, but I think it's just a bit of a shake of the legs. 
A little bit of shake of the legs up toward the top of the climb here. 6.2 watts per kilogram, 181 beats per minute, 5.8 watts per kilogram we can see here. They're about to hit that banner. Now, this is the hardest part of the climb for sure. It's 10% gradient, and it's all about that continuance. If they do get anybody to get up a little bit of a gap, they might be able to cause some distance between themselves and anybody who's suffering at this point, but it does look like it is most likely going to stick together as Pithy is able to kick 200 beats per minute, right? 201. I think he's definitely getting put on the back foot at this point and has to do a little bit of recovery on that downhill. They do have two seconds here. Shaw up toward the front here. Looks like Jones, though, going to be backing off a little bit. Just took that KOM. 643, actually. It will actually be Rooney who grabs it for from him right away. Nobody popping off the back just yet. And on the downhill, it is a lot easier to hang on to the riders. But it will be PJ Race WBR, first rider to go off the back from this lead group. So we'll give him a ride for his efforts there, but it is going now to be a front-running group of about 11 riders, I think, as they are uh, dropping one by one. First one to come off the back during the climb, though, it was PJ there from Race WBR. It does look like we got a little bit of information. We've been chatting about innovation and what a threat that they're going to be out on course today. After they have climbed up from the top, Innovation is definitely still in the race here with Hinton and Shaw, as well as, uh, I think there is one other in there still from Innovation. We'll have to take a look through here, but Hinton and Shaw definitely have made it through so far. So let's head on over to our analyst here with Jonathan Noblet to hear all about the riders from Innovation. Hey Nathan, so yeah, in that front group there is actually um, Ari Scott who we're looking at here on the screen. Uh, and the Hinton and as well as um, Mark Shaw as well. So those are three riders that are actually in from Innovation Cycling. 103 members on, registered on ZwiftPower.com uh, for that team. Uh, they do some crazy workouts uh, and uh, group rides out on Zwift uh, early in the mornings for Europe. So quite a lot of those riders uh, in New Zealand when they're in the evenings, they come and ride with some of the bunches of uh, team members from Innovation in uh, Europe as well. So you saw these riders here, we actually saw some interesting tactics there from Ari Scott going up the climb. He seems to be pushing harder for front, making Ollie chase him. And then uh, Mark Shaw and um, Andrew Hinton would then uh, chase off the back. But let's have a little look at uh, some stats about uh, Mark Shaw and Andrew Hinton. So Mark Shaw, 44 years of age, 72 kilos, 187 centimeters in height. Current uh, average uh, race power is uh, 302 watts. Uh, so he's held that well for 25 minutes. So uh, that's pretty high wattage. Uh, fastest time at the climb is 6.54. Uh, I'm not sure if we caught what the climb up the KOM was just then. but um, 6.43. He six, just uh, beat He just beat his fastest time. So, so just be there. Wow. Okay, so this is a hard race for him then because they're really pushing that. Um, Andrew Hinton as well, uh, 42 years age. Uh, so all this sort of like mid-40s age. Uh, so Ollie definitely the younger one getting pushed around by some of these more experienced riders out on Zwift. Uh, and uh, possibly in life as well. Uh, but um, Andy Hinton as well, uh, 7 minutes 23 on that climb with average 343 watts. Um, so definitely like a good bunch of riders in innovation and with Ari Scott who seems to be keep pushing off the front and uh, making them chase. Uh, we could see some interesting team tactics from innovation, so it'd be great to see um, how they get on uh, so far. Um, they're going well so far and the rest of the race, we'll see how they get on with uh, now three riders in that front group, Nathan. Thanks a lot, Johnny. Yeah, definitely be watching out for innovation as the race goes on with three up in the front group. Now, actually, is it going on four, actually? A. Scott is out there as well. I, I don't see innovation in the name there from Scott, but uh, we do have, it looks like, Shaw Hinton as well as uh, Smith there still, all hanging out. So three riders there from innovation still in that group. Ollie Jones, though, we are getting a little bit more chatter in the uh, <laughs> Facebook groups here, though, about Ollie being in there and actually it is coming from christopher durham who is a long time zwifter actually christopher i've been riding with him out on zwift from the early early days i've watched him come up into his junior racing uh through zwift training actually throughout the races so really cool to see him uh hanging out in the broadcast he says ali's looking strong out there is probably the pre-race favorite but don't rule out the rest of the field this should be Exciting one. Good to see Christopher out there. And uh, definitely, I think he's right on that. I think Ali is the favorite um, to a lot of riders. As far as on paper goes, um, between the real life as well as his accomplishments in Zwift. But, you know, 
it's going to be a battle out there going up against three innovation riders. And Nathan, uh, we're also getting a, a message there by from Quinton saying that uh, it's Ali. Ollie's actually in Luca in Italy at the moment uh, because he's over there with uh, Dimension Data under three development team. And it's actually yeah midnight racing right now. So I'm just checking the time. Then it is uh, twelve thirty at night for Ollie Jones right now. So he's set his alarm or either stayed up late to get involved in this Swift National Championships for the New Zealand Swift Championships. Ollie is very determined for this jersey. I wouldn't say he's in there just to, just to have a race. He's in there to win it. Yeah, he wants that kit for one year. For those who are wondering what we're talking about here, you're just joining in. This is the Zwift National Championships for New Zealand. We will also be covering the Australian National Championships and the South African National Championships tonight and tomorrow morning for myself. So to make sure to not miss out on those broadcasts that are coming up as well. But Ali Jones uh, has been the talk of the race so far. But there are far, quite a few other riders here that... I'm not super familiar with actually. G. Hayden here, 2.7 watts per kilogram up toward the front. No hard matter onto him, but good for him to show up and represent for his country out there today. Pithy here, 178, 180. This is a rider I have never seen out on course. I don't believe maybe once or twice at the most before I, you know that I've seen him out on out here racing. But 3.6 watts per kilogram, he's been able to hang on with every one of the attacks so far, actually. So I wonder if this is somebody we're going to be watching out for that might be a dark horse on the day here today, Wes. Mm -hmm. I think so, because I remember seeing a PD name in before, I think for a couple of e crits as well, and was definitely up around the front of the uh, of the bunch, uh, actually following a few attacks on the Volcano course. So the e crit is uh, also one of the weekly races that we, uh, that we stream, and I've had Nathan lucky enough to join me a couple of times for the Aussie eCrit stream. So that's usually on a Tuesday night. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty sure that name, if I'm not mistaken, has been up around the pointy end of the eCrit racing as well, which is pretty uh, hotly contested as I think we had, what was it, about four or five pros or join us a couple of times when I had the stream with you, Nathan. Yeah, it's about some of the fastest racing out on Zwift, for sure. The e racing is uh, definitely, I think we were chatting about one, one of those nights when we, were, when we were broadcasting that, it was like we had mentioned riding with Richie Port. We had mentioned like racing for national championships. We mentioned someone was a part of setting world championships. I mean, it was this, it was this crazy Come night games. of like Come games. everybody. Come games, yeah. And exactly. I yeah. mean, it was just like thing after thing, like all of these riders were showing up with huge Palmares or, 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 or connections to teams and, and rides and races that were just insane. So, yeah, it's some of the fastest rain out on Zwift. And if you are at the front end of those races at all, you definitely have um, definitely have a, a, a huge engine to hang on. So we are seeing in the women's race, though, it will be P. Pawson here, Penny now coming on through, coming up and over the top of the climb. Good to see her with that two-minute gap at this point. Wes, I think it's written mm -hmm. almost in stone, barring anything that could be happen or a total bonk, Penny might yep. already have this one in the books. Yeah, and Pawson has unleashed the paw. She's got the claws out here. She's going all on her own here, solo. Long way to go still, but she looks pretty confident there. And she's sort of still sitting at a pretty high heart rate, I'd say, there too for her. So she's definitely at that threshold at 184 beats right now. Really high cadence here as well, which will help her sort of sustain that, Nathan. Nice and efficient there around that 100 RPM mark there. And looks pretty confident in a night rocking the Cervelo bike as well. I'm pretty sure with zip wheels. So she's got a nice combo going there. She's picked out her kit, her hairstyle. That's another thing we didn't mention, Nathan. I'm sure some of these riders have probably uh, spent a little bit of time pimping their avatar, knowing that there's a live stream <laughs> on today, too. So it's definitely been a focus as of recently you know there's been some new updates in the last months here with the ability to really do a lot with the uh with the riders here now the men are coming on through the this is a cool banner actually in game national championships finish there that is the finish line that's where riders are going to be looking for here as they do come through with their customized avatars and uh the little bit of flair of personality on all of these riders some of the riders actually with their own kits in game as you do see the innovation team with the, um, you know, a lot of these teams have adopted up front innovation and team experimental adopted the alienware kit. And now, as you can see, they've adjusted a little bit 
to have. We have these double alien teams actually out there. Jeff Rooney riding for Team Experimental, as you can see in that uh, Team Experimental kit that does have the black alien uh, head on it. And then we do have the Innovation Rider there with the green cap actually uh, that is just behind Pithy here. So uh, cool little kits in game, a little bit of customization speaking of. But two laps to go coming underneath that National Championships banner now and still all calm. And this is what I was expecting at the start of the race was this like just looking at each other, but it looks like they're happy with, with where things are at at this point. But wait a second. I missed this. When did this happen? A Scott off the front. When did he get away? We completely missed this. Johnny, maybe he can help us out with some analytics here because I did not see this attack off the front. Did this happen on the downhill? I, it had to have happened somewhere through the, um, Somewhere through the leaving of the volcano, actually, we took a quick little look uh, around course there for a moment, but missed completely this attack. Scott with 15 seconds, a lot of racing to go, but it looks like the riders are definitely wow. responding. Jones now, 10 watts per kilogram. This is the way to get it done. This is the way to make a break happen out on Zwift. You get this kind of a gap between you and a rider who's strong enough up front, you kick in the orange numbers, and people cannot respond. They have to throw down that same kind of speed, and you keep doing it over and over again. You do not drag the pack up at a threshold effort. You go all in to get that distance. And we just getting some shout outs there as well on the from Wayne uh, Smythe is saying Ollie, Lawrence and Carl are all from Christchurch as well in New Zealand. So uh, obviously uh, the race within the race of New Zealand having a little uh, a little population of, uh, of races from each sort of town as well. So Ollie's got some other friends out there as well. So it looks like we're getting a few other shout outs there too and to get to get the stats which were which we were talking about earlier with uh on swift power too so that was certainly a big shakedown there and there's a lot of orange numbers flying on there nathan so that's 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 whittled this bunch down very quickly it really has i mean we saw a huge attack there from ollie to get back on terms with the front end of the race it does look like they were able to catch i believe up to scott as he is now back into the pack here he might suffer from that attack actually mm -hmm. as we see him on the back here at 179 beats per minute sometimes you can regret going off the front pretty quickly there. Now, we do have a little bit of information here coming up from our analytics here about Ari Scott, who was just off the front. Johnny, let's hear all about it. Yeah, so um, Ari Scott, Nathan, uh, quite a young rider, 17 years of age, so um, about five years younger than um, Ollie Jones. So we thought Ollie might have been the youngest rider in the pack. It looks like Ari Scott is actually the youngest. So light rider, 63 kilos, uh, pretty tall, really, about six foot one, 183 centimeters. Um, done about 16 races on Zwift, uh, mainly does the Innovation and WBR races and I recently did the Elite Kiwi uh, Tour as well out on Zwift which was a, a stage race which uh, Zwift put on as well. So riders we definitely want to kind of keep an eye on. Um, not got that full history of data about him as we do from some riders but uh, definitely someone who's been out there racing a lot on Zwift uh, that we want to uh, definitely see uh, perform well in this race today. Yeah, definitely. Uh, good to see another young rider out there getting things done in the world of the Zwift National Championships here. Ari Scott, I think we should be watching out for him. You know, the motivation, I think, from a lot of these young riders is something to talk about. Zwift is this whole new opportunity, I think, for a whole batch of young riders out there. They understand gaming, they understand ride, they understand racing, they understand online platforms, and they see this opportunity to show off what they got in the racing world, Wes. Yeah, and it looks like Scott has been showing off again. It looks like he's got, a, is it a featherweight being popped up out of the tunnel? This is an uphill drag here, Nathan. It's pretty, uh, it's not It's not too steep, but it definitely, uh, you feel that uphill drag there. So he's used that power up to get a little bit of an extra gap up there as well. It looks like the riders are responding behind. And I'm pretty sure it's Ollie leading the chase behind as well. And then up uh, is, uh, is it Pithy? Pithy? How do you say his name, Nathan, there? Pithy? I've been saying Pithy. Pithy will work until he, correct, until, until he corrects us. But uh, <laughs> yeah, right. 3.4 yeah. watts per oh, for Pithy here, it looks like. Yeah. So Pithy also, um, I'm getting some information from Quinton saying that Pithy and Ollie are friends uh, from New Zealand and, are, and good friends and train together and quite, he's quite a strong racer and we've already seen that tonight too. Yeah, we are, see, yeah, we are seeing Pithy uh, 3.9 here and if he has friends with uh, Ollie here, I have a feeling that he perhaps has uh, 
a really, uh, you know, at least is racing and riding amongst a pretty strong group out there over in New Zealand. So Hayden here now at the front. Looks like Pithy now 10 watts per kilogram. Here's his name maybe out in the broadcast. 194 beats per minute actually coming from Pithy. This is a full-on attack actually as you can see. 6.3 yep. on the front. 3 seconds. It's a counter too. Scott kicked it up over the top of that uh, exiting of the underground. The heart rates were high and Pithy knew this was a moment that he might be able to get away. And if he's friends with Ollie, look at Ollie. 1.5, 0. Look, he even went to the front to shut the door. Full on shut the Did you see that? He would, He went to the front and slowed right on down. Went to the front, slowed right on down. This is definitely a tactical moment between friends. Ali sitting on the back, not chasing down Pithy. And this is definitely turning out to be team versus team. Even if it isn't in the names at this point, it's definitely a situation where riders are, be, are uh, playing some tactics here, Wes, between each other. Yeah, and I certainly know exactly what Ollie's doing there. I've, uh, I've, I've had uh, a couple of other teammates in races in situations similar to this, and uh, you do that little little surge, get to the front, and then just slowly ease it off and then bring the pace down. It looks like we've got a response there in the orange numbers again there. Is that Scott going now? Yeah, it does look like Scott does want to close down that 10-second gap. And again, this is the way to get it done. 50 here, 4.5 watts per kilogram with Hayden there on the front. Now, orange numbers is the way you want to do it. If you want to get a break that does stick with a smaller group, give your chances a higher dice roll for that sprint at the end or even to try and break any riders that you do get away with, your chances are always higher with less riders amongst it. If you do a steady effort at the front and work together too much, you might bring too many with you. So that's a lot of times why you see these big kicks into the orange numbers from these experienced riders. When, when you see an inexperienced rider out on Zwift, a lot of times you will see somebody who just says, I'm just going to pull this back in solo by myself. Let's work together. And, and, and we're going to set the six watts per kilogram, five watts per kilogram, or whatever it might be, I, whatever they can hold for 30 minutes or so, or an hour or so. All those other riders... They just get to sit in at endurance and get a free ride right back up to the front of the race. If you kick like we're seeing here, it's a risk. You're using a lot of energy, but you're rolling that dice that you're going to get a lot less riders in a break. It does look like it all came back together, though. Pithy's been brought back in, but they've all had to burn some matches. And you know everybody else that came with had to at least burn some sort of match there to stay with it and didn't get a free ride. I mean, it's definitely a way to race out Absolutely. on it is, uh, if, you know, if you're not hitting up in those high orange numbers and you are just gonna actually just drag the bunch up to up to the front end. So yeah, going into that orange zone of those high numbers, the high watts per kilo, doing that snap on the pedals, Nathan, it really is quite taxing on the legs. Uh, but if it's taxing for you, then it's gonna be taxing for everyone else to catch up as well. So yeah, it's definitely, you don't wanna do that uh, that sort of low, sl low sort of slow sort of move to drag everyone else up. So. That hit punch sort of attack is certainly something that will take a toll as well on some of the riders that are already on limit here, already on threshold with high heart rates. Exactly, exactly. And you know that if they're not in the draft, they're working that same amount. You know, at least at least they have to get back into the draft. Now we do have a couple more, a little bit more information here coming from the women's race here. Uh, Penny Pawson, who looks to be winning the uh, the race here on paper. Uh, let's go ahead and hear from Johnny on who this rider is. Oh, and we need Johnny's microphone because Johnny had interference earlier. There we go. Go ahead. Hey, okay, we're good. So Penny Paulson, Nathan, uh, coming out of New Zealand, uh, a rider who's just done her first lap and heading on to her second lap because women are doing two laps out on the course today. So a little bit about Penny, uh, she's actually a full-time doctor and mother of two, uh, two boys. Um, she actually was uh, quite an active rider back in the early, uh, uh, early 2002, 2003. She, she actually rode for an elite women's road team in New Zealand. Uh, since then she actually took some time off, uh, off uh, cycling to raise her family and now she's actually trying to get back into it and she, was, um, she actually got a gold medal at the 2017 Masters Games in Auckland in the uh, individual time trial and road race. And uh, she came eighth, uh, she got third, she got bronze medal in the uh, individual time trial in the uh, UCI Masters in 2017, uh, eighth in the road race, 
and is currently uh, training uh, for the 2018 Masters Road Race and also for uh, the Mass Tractors World Championships in October in Los Angeles. So, um, strong rider, definitely. I think uh, you agree. Uh, some great, uh, great Palmares as well there. Yeah, definitely. It looks like Penny Pawson here jumping into the race and assuming with all those Palmares there, all those accomplishments, she will have the National Governing Body license and also be Zara approved and be able to jump on in and grab that National Championships jersey. So barring any other circumstances, it looks like we have found our New Zealand National Champion. She just needs to get across the line. Half a lap to go for Penny Pawson, it looks like. One more time up under the top of the climb. Maybe a little more than a half a lap, but uh, still head on over toward the S-turns and then up and over the top of the climb, and she will be crowned the national championship champion for this year. In the men's race, though, they are heading on over toward the Volcano at this point, and it is all kinds of Grupo Compacto at this point. They are definitely just looking at each other as the riders are heading toward... Uh, their next time up and over the top here, it's going to be two laps to, well, lap and a half to go. Two more times up and over the top. Nobody really willing to get take any risk. When do you think the risks are going to happen here? Hayden is off the front here. No heart rate. They do not have to chase him, and they do not look very motivated to do so. It's definitely Grupo Compacto. When do you think the next time? I think it's this climb coming up here pretty quick here, Wes. Yeah, definitely this climb, and I think that's where the move, the main move is going to go. I mean, this this group is already whittled down. What are we left with? I think maybe six riders or so left now. So we were at eleven to twelve uh, in that early on period now, but after those attacks from Scott um, and then also from Pippi as well up there, launching it off the front, and then Ollie do, laying his boots in, closing those gaps. So we're going to some stats here now as well, Nathan. Yeah, it looks like uh, you were asking how many riders we got left here, and it does look like it is about nine riders total up toward the front and uh, seven, eight seconds back from Hayden, who is off the front, who uh, will not be able to win the race, but cheers to him for being out there and killing it out there. But without a hurry monitor, it will have a uh, disqualification. But uh, Hayden here, seven seconds back with Smith, and uh, these are the average wattages, I believe, or no, the wattages currently, uh, being pushed out from the riders. So that is the current standings. It looks like Kay Barker here is currently in 10th. That's the next group, which is 524 back, actually. So that's the situation there. And then we do have, it looks like, for the women's situation, uh, the first three will come through correctly. The rest of them are not actually racing in the race there, but it is Pawson on the front there, followed by Hamilton, and then Dolly. Uh, the rest not a part of the race with uh, not a huge uh, group of women showing up for the women's race out there for New Zealand. But it does look like up toward the front now still. Smith, Innovation, all those riders from Innovation still in that group. Shaw, Hinton, and C. Smith. I'm going to be watching out for them for sure on the day here. So looking through... Um, the results then too for the past races for these riders specifically uh, from innovation, you know, I think uh, it, it, we probably want to take a look at like what the kind of sprint powers that we've seen from them, what kind of climbing that we've seen from these riders, who is the favorite depending on when things really start to go. Looking over at uh, Mr. Uh, Shaw here, I believe it is that I'm looking at. You know, I believe this rider, as far as his skills go, which is really cool about ZwiftPower.com. If you head over to ZwiftPower.com, that's where all the results lie, actually, for a lot of these races. They are a third party um, with access to APIs, third party that gets direct information it from Zwift actually so fully reliable third-party website and uh, his you know Shaw here one minute power 530 watts we're seeing from him uh, you know as far as his sprinting effort though the highest 15 second that we've ever seen from Shaw is going to be it looks like about 12.3 watts per kilogram I think we can see a little bit more than that I think for the W out there today it's gonna have to be if it does come down to a sprint Barring any kind of aero power-up super savviness, I think it's going to have to be up into that 15 or so to get take the W at the highest end of Zwift Racing. It definitely is, Nathan. And this, uh, the heart rate's out on course as well. Being 
been very varied uh, throughout this uh, throughout this race. So some of the riders that have a naturally lower heart. We see this, uh, Smith here at 155. Most of the other riders were, were sitting up around that 180 mark as well. So it's certainly uh, it changes out on course. Everyone has a different uh, a different heart rate zone as well. So that's uh, it's something to keep in mind. And those races without the heart rate monitor as well, maybe as well they may have not been able to pair them on time as well because we look like uh, that was it. Uh, um, Greg, isn't it? Um, Hayden. Yeah, it? Hayden off the front there. Hayden, Hayden, sorry. Hayden off the front there. Looks like he's probably taking this race pretty seriously, but uh, unfortunately his heart rate monitor isn't uh, connected there. So it may have, may have been a last minute uh, disconnect from, from, uh, from him. Now, for the riders here uh, that are from Innovation, as far as who might be working for who here, I do believe it is going to be um, Hinton. That the riders will be watching out for when it comes to the sprint situation actually we are seeing a 15 second sprint at 15 watts per kilogram actually from hinton so i think a hinton definitely be watching out for him in the end here uh don't have any stats there on pithy now i'm wondering as far as ollie jones go what kind of numbers do we see from ollie in a sprint type situation you know being a rider who as you were saying maybe not quite uh, the best climber. We are seeing 4.23.3 watts per kilogram, actually. 4.15 seconds for him. And I think being a rider who might be um, a little heavier than the rest of these riders, that 14 watts per kilogram still, in a sprint, raw power really matters. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the watts per kilogram, not quite, you know, is going to be important. But really, that 14.3 that I'm seeing for him for 15 seconds is probably a few hundred watts more than some of these other riders. Yeah, definitely. Well, he's got that got that punch there, but he's certainly got that got that punch which transfers across to this short sort of style of climbing as well. You know, it's not super long, so it does sort of suit him both ways really. Ollie could be one to attack and go away solo as well on the climb, or he could win from a sprint finish as well. So, and the other riders know that too that Ollie has a strong kick, but he can also follow on these sorts of climbs like this. If it was a longer climb for going up out, out to Zwift or something like that, then maybe that wouldn't be in Ollie's favour. But uh, certainly a climb like this uh, does suit Ollie. We are getting some questions coming on through here. Great to see all the questions uh, coming through from Facebook as well as uh, the streaming platforms that we are live on. I am seeing uh, the Mixer chat starting to blow up a little bit. Good to see you guys over at the Mixer chat. For those of you who are just tuning in and are wondering what is going on, this is Zwift National Championships for New Zealand. We will be broadcasting the Australian National Championships uh, in about an hour and ten minutes from now. And then as well as the South African National Championships at 5.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, the South African time on that i'm not exactly sure but that will be about 12 hours a little under 12 hours from now will be the south african championship so if you have any questions or comments let us know uh the way that all these riders i do see those questions coming on through over at mixer so for those of you who do not know what zwift is this is a massive multiplayer online game in which all the riders are set up on bikes at home either with a smart trainer a power meter or a speed sensor communicating power into the game that you are seeing in the left upper left hand corner jay rooney that we're looking at right now that i just gave a ride on to is producing 400 121 watts on an actual bike which is powering his avatar forward up this climb right now racing against M. Shaw, L. Pithy, C. Smith, J. Rooney, and G. Kempton all in this lead group. Those heart rates are real heart rates that you're looking at on screen right now. These riders are given everything they got up and over the top. About halfway up this climb, this is that point where did I go too hard? Can I handle this for the rest of this climb, right, yeah. Wes? I mean, 177, 180, Absolutely. you start suffering at this yep. point. You start feeling your heart come up through your throat a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and as you know, Nathan, being a racer, I'm watching these heart rates creep up, and I'm feeling that that sort of that feeling of that what the riders would be going through right now, that lactate. Look, we're up, up at 180 beats now here for Smith. We were, as we were talking earlier, he was around the, what, 145 and it was sort of chilled, 150 marks. So he's getting up towards that point here in threshold. And it just feels like, Nathan, especially on, on like this, when you're getting that buildup of lactic, it looks like his cadence has also slowed down a bit now too. So he's using a bit of muscle strength there. He's picked his cadence back up again now. Also, these riders, some of these riders may have the stream on too. So 
they may be uh, picking up a little bit of uh, hints and trips and ticks, uh, trips, uh, I can't even speak right now, I'm getting that excited about this climb right now unfolding in front of us, Nathan. But these riders are going to be certainly uh, feeling the pinch here as we see someone attack. Now is Ollie Jones off the front here, over 600 watts and laying it down with 170 heart rate, Nathan. He is not mucking around. He's really this isn't this isn't a, this isn't just a little bit of a leg shake. This is a proper dig here. It definitely is. Look at the pack. It's starting to break up, and now the action is starting here. Here comes here comes Smith, though, with the counter there. I think Innovation was sitting in wow. and just waiting for it. Ollie kicked into 10 watts per kilogram, uh, and now here comes Smith. They're trying to break things apart. There is just one more loop around the top of this volcano, and they will be coming into the banner. As soon as they do here, they're going to want to see this distance between themselves and the rest of the riders, and now we got a gap. This is something to work with here, but they've got to continue all the way over the Top. We're seeing Scott. We're seeing Jones. These two were definitely two riders that we were talking about. Pithy's trying to go along with it. And then we did see Ollie and Pithy working together earlier. Innovation still trying to hang on. Smith is there. He might be the only hope left for Innovation. Rooney trying to chase that down. Mountain Biker coming out of New Zealand there. 173 beats per minute. 428 watts. Kempton off the back though. Three seconds is a huge gap on a climb. At that 3%, 4%, it'll hit 10% in just a moment here. That is a lot of distance to cover. It is so difficult to cover that amount of time, actually, in a short amount of space over the top of a climb like this. Wes, I mean, this is like 30 seconds on a downhill or a flat. This is a gap, and they are going to want to work together to hold it. This is up in the odds of getting that W. It's certainly up in the odds. Uh, that was not a little bit of a leg shake, like we said, Nathan. That was a proper attack there. Watts were laid down. Reactions were fired there. It's certainly uh, certainly shaking them out there and out here. Looking at these rows, heart rate is quite high as well, up in that 180 heart rate. So, And still the watts are being poured on here. And that 400 watts here, right to the top of this climb, it's not going to let up. And as they get down the other side, Nathan, it's going to sort of obviously uh, probably start to take that little bit of a look at each other, see who's left, left, reassess. Looks like we've only got five riders left here at the front now. I'm not sure if the time gap's back to the other riders, but they will certainly have to work very hard to bring this back because I can't imagine these riders now will want to start to slow up. We're getting towards the, the sort of halfway through the race now, at least now, Nathan. Well, actually, what are we at? 38.5 kilometres into the race now. So well established in this race. As we'll come around, I think it'll be one more lap, is it, Nathan? We're on one and a half laps to go at the moment. Yeah, but a, about a one and a half laps to go will be one more climb after this. Aiden Scott, one more kick here, it looks like, trying to kind of put the nail in the coffin here for the riders off the back, or maybe try and cause a little bit more distance. Ollie, another kick from him here, 186 now. Scott there, 8.4 watts per kilogram. Pithy trying to break maybe one more off here. We do see Smith here using that feather power up here, and it is all isolation now. We were talking about innovation, 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 but at this point... Innovation has one hope left for the New Zealand National Championships. Ali Jones, Pithy, those two, I believe, working together today, friends there, and uh, trying to make things happen right now, and it looks like they have done so. 33 seconds, that ain't coming back now. Kempton is when the others, it's going out like crazy at this point. These riders have a huge amount of work cut out for them to get back on terms, and even if they do so, a lot of times, Wes, once you go off the back, you probably aren't going to be able to hang on another time up and over the top unless these riders have wasted all of their power on those attacks. But I have a feeling it's definitely the cream of the crop has risen to the top here, and we are seeing four, five, about one, two, three, four, five riders that have made it into this lead group, and we're going to choose amongst these our national champion. Um, the other part of it now that really comes into play, Nathan, is power-ups. Power-ups are going to come into a huge effect here. If you get the right power-up, you definitely want to be hanging on to it unless you need it for, for whatever reason. If you're, if, or I guess this comes down to a two ways to look at it, Nathan. If you're struggling to stay with this bunch, then you're probably going to have to use your power up on that uphill, that last time up that uphill, that kick over the top. You're probably going to have to lay down your power up to, to stay with these front races. But the likes of Ollie Jones uh, of, of grabbing a, the right power up, he's probably going to not have, have to utilize that right to the end. So if you've got an error power up, he'd be holding that to the finish line, wouldn't he, Nathan? Yeah, I think so. You know, here's the thing. We are getting some questions come through, and the question here coming from a couple of these riders, actually, or a couple of the, the people watching over on Facebook are really good, actually, specifically about that. Can somebody break away, or is it too far? 
you know, would somebody be able to get away up and over the top? This is coming in from Tony Bagshaw, and whether or not Ali is going to want to, or, or riders are going to want to save that arrow power up for the sprint, or, you know, tactically, that's really, you know, a part of it too. If you have an arrow power up, and you want to take that risk because you don't think you can win the sprint. We saw it in the national championships this past year for the Northern Hemisphere. Riders were able to get away and stay away from the rest of the group and hold them off. But it was only with those, those races that had a very strung out race, actually. The race had to be super strung out in order for them to get away. Any of the groups like the UK race... It came down to like a bunch sprint of like 15, 20 riders. I mean, there was a lot of riders left in the UK race for the UK National Championships. And because of that, nobody was able to get away because the group was able to chase it down. I think in this group with only five riders, it might actually be to the advantage of a rider to not roll the dice on that downhill into the sprint, mess it up with a split-second decision, and not get the W when you've got the power to get away. Personally, I like winning that way better. It, it, for me, the statistics are higher if you can just make it happen. If you can make it happen, that's what that's, <laughs> I mean, that's what that's what everyone everyone sort of wants to think. Can you can you let can you have a little conversation with your legs and have a little chat with them? Go, yep. Are you ready for this? Because I'm, I'm going to unleash this on you. Exactly. Have, you have you had that conversation before, Nathan? I'm sure you've had that conversation with your legs before, and you knee up to screaming, and you're like, oh yeah, come on, you can do it. Yeah, I've had that conversation a few it. times. I think uh, you know it's a it's a good day when it works out. It doesn't happen often, mm -hmm. but it is a really good oh. day when it works out that way. So we'll have to see how it does work out here. Now we are seeing it looks like this four off the front. Kempton and the rest, I think they've maybe thrown in the towel a little bit here. I mean, Kempton looks a little bit motivated. It's SASCC here, 4.3 watts per kilogram. They can see the watts per kilogram. The riders are pushing up ahead. That's something to chat a little bit about as well. On Zwift, it's a little bit different here. You know, you don't know the speeds. In real life, you don't know the speeds or the powers that other riders are doing in the groups up ahead. Out of sight, out of mind. One thing about Zwift, there's not a whole lot of out of sight. You can always click forward and go, hey, they're letting up. Hey, <laughs> hey, they're doing this. And so there's all these motivations that go on in the virtual world to keep you honest. You know what I mean? To keep you pushing the whole way through. I guess the other side of it too, Nathan. I don't know if you've you've actually uh, uh, you know used that tactic in race two. To if someone is up the road, have a look at their heart rate and have a look at their power as well. Like to do that click up and uh, have a little sneaky cheek. Uh, a little bit of, if if the race isn't live streamed, then you obviously get the live feedback from us commentating. But if the if it's an in-house race and not live streamed, have you done that click through the riders to see someone off in front of you and whether you think they can sustain that power and heart rate? I think I look at other riders more than I look at myself, actually. I'm actually, like, <laughs> clicking through, and I'll, like, lose my avatar because it's all about the race tactic. It's all about what everybody else is doing. It's all, you know, there's the reality in racing of the rider who does the least work is usually the one who wins, right? The rider mm -hmm. who ends up, you know, usually at the end of any stage or big, big race, you see that the rider who won, if you watched – their power data, they were the one who conserved the most and then had the biggest amount of power at the end or at the most critical moments. And so, yeah, I spend a lot of time seeing what other riders are doing, responding to the power numbers that you're seeing mm -hmm. out there from them, actually. So um, definitely yeah, do you have a little bit actually, of peek around. That was actually a comment here from Matt, too, on, over on Facebook, was saying looks like Smith is riding smart out there, the lowest average power and watts per kilo. Oh, interesting to see, actually. So, C. Smith here from Innovation. Maybe the hope for Innovation out there is still definitely sitting in here. It looks like Ali as well, though, sitting in. Now, we did lose Pithy, actually, to yeah, the – because just, he went with – he was with them, and now he's gone. Yep, we just – yeah, we just got that. Also, Tom Hargraves uh, from the UK offices is chatting on the stream, too, to saying, yeah, that ride has just become – just become four riders out front, not sure what happened there. And neither are we, Nathan, with that one. Yeah, it's interesting. Maybe a dropout, perhaps a disconnection, or perhaps just nothing left in the legs. I and mean, 192 beats per minute here still from Pithy. So uh, perhaps the work was out there just for Ollie. We did see him go up over the top there, and it did seem like they were working together. We do know they are friends in real life, and Ollie is up front here, but it does look like still four riders. 
The gap is being closed by Hinton and Kempton. They're letting them come back. Shaw's there as well. This was completely unexpected. Where, what is yeah. going on with this group? Are they going to put some work in? But I think the reality of a few riders sitting in that aren't maybe doing some work are causing the situation here. You know, how many times do you see that in real life racing, Wes, where a couple of riders start mm-hmm. not pulling through and next thing you know, the whole group slows way down because it's like, if you're not doing it, I'm not doing it. Exactly that. Yeah. Like that, that, that negativity starts to kick in. You know, if I'm not, if you're not going to pull as hard as me, then I'm not going to pull either. So, and that uh, certainly comes into effect uh, in the in the real world and also out on Swift with those virtual sits, you know, people start to get, get a little bit ticked off and flick the elbow and no one's coming through. Actually, just saw through the uh, Zwift HQ in Melbourne, just saw GP Lama and Pat Shaw walk through. So they'll be uh, having a little bit of a chat with us, hopefully, uh, before we go to the Australian stream as well, Nathan. Uh, it would be great to have them in, so make sure to tune in f- to that in just about, I believe we'll be live in about 50 minutes or so with that uh, interview with those ri- those uh, Zwifters and commentators that they come on. It would be great to have them in the broadcast for the Australian National Champions. But we got one lap to go here in the mm-hmm. New Zealand National Championship still. Let's go ahead and see how things are going over on the women's side of things, though, as they are definitely hammering away here, but it is possible. Lawson making her way to the top mm-hmm. of the climb here. Six minutes up. Lots of Palmares under uh, Penny's Penny Pawson's belt here. And she definitely is going to be taking this down. Two laps for the women. So she's only got about a half a lap just up over the top of this climb now. And she will be strolling in to the mm-hmm. finish line to claim yes. her one-year kit. It's 40, 48 kilometers, I think, in length. So it just just coming on uh, 10 kilometers now, coming up to 38. Is that correct, Nathan? Yeah, that's cor- that is correct. And she yeah. is, uh, you know, looking at the course pr- profile here. It is uh, 45.6 kilometers, so a little bit less than that. So about four, okay. about eight, kilo- eight yeah. kilometers to go. But with the downhill and in there, she's going to be covering distance yeah. very quickly. And uh, not a whole... heart rate too, then, Nathan. She's just flying and we saw earlier no she's not letting up at all she's earning this one and we saw Mm -hmm. earlier that she actually has i believe some tt background and stuff johnny was coming in with a few of that analytics Mm -hmm. there so i think she likes this kind of uh kind of racing actually out on swift yeah she's i i guess you can you can sort of sympathize with that being uncomfortable but comfortable you find that comfortable being uncomfortable as as a racer yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Actually, I if you're winning, if you're winning, yeah, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you're winning. <laughs> if, if you're chasing, chasing, or chasing off the back, or trying to chase to Gruppetto, it's a different feeling. But when you're out in front and you're going solo, like you said, Nathan, if, if you if you had the legs to do a solo effort and win solo, it's always a nice victory. That's the truth. That's the truth. It's one of the dreams that you usually have. Actually, we are getting some comments coming through from Facebook here. A national champion out of the U.S. of A. Adam Zimmerman, he's the current reigning national champion for the U.S., says four-rider bunch sprint is more scary than the big bunch. They need to chase down every attack. But as mm-hmm. they did all come back together, bigger group now. Someone won't wait for the sprint finish in his opinion. I have to agree with that, actually. That's a great analysis there coming from Adam Zimmerman. Adam Zimmerman, who does uh, a couple of podcasts, actually. He's got his own podcast as well as a part of the In the Pens podcast that's run by Greg Leto. Uh, which is specifically a Zwift racing podcast. Make sure to check out In the Pens. They have a lot of great race analysis. They also uh, chat about all the racing that's going on out on Zwift from week to week. So good to see Adam tuning in. Uh, some national kits, it looks like, hanging out in the broadcast as well. We are getting some chatter from Pithy, actually, as well. He's saying that he had a computer lag. Now, that's... <laughs> You know, is it a game? Is it not a game? There's this whole like thing that comes in. Lag. It's called, is it's, an called issue. A pump, it's called a, vir- a virtual puncture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a virtual a puncture. He, had to, he put his hand up for Shimano. Shimano never arrived. He had to go back to Mavic. Um, so that took a little bit longer than he expected. So he found himself 30 seconds back, he said, Nathan. Yeah, that's too bad. You know, um, it's interesting, like, whether or not, you know, when I upgrade my computers, I'm always thinking about the latest games that are out there and whether or not they can be played on that computer. So it looks like, you know, but Zwift doesn't need a super high-end computer to get going. But sometimes if you do get a little bit of lag there, as we see from Pithy there, might have caused a couple of 
virtual punctures there. So it's too bad to hear uh, about that with Pitney. He looked to be a strong rider. Yeah, so that's obviously frustrating for him. And, and it might have also been the internet connection as well, Nathan. So not necessarily the uh, the computer itself, but yeah, if you get dropout uh, of an internet connection or someone, maybe he's probably not in the house alone. He's probably, uh, maybe his younger sister is downloading a, a movie or watching Netflix or one of those things that gobbles up your internet uh, bandwidth. So yeah, unfortunate, but that is with racing. Uh, things can unfold uh, just like in the real world. You have a puncher, you can have a virtual one as well. This is true. This is true. You know, there is preparation if it is on the line uh, as far as, mm -hmm. you know, just like in real life, there's a certain amount of preparation so, so it, when it comes to that, making sure that your internet is not going to uh, get messed with. You have a solid connection <laughs> at all times. Uh, you know, it's kind of like having... I feel Go ahead. I feel that you sort of to put it in an analogy, I guess it would be like you either have your toolkit and puncher kit with you, or you have a spare wheel ready to go. Exactly, exactly. You that you have prepared correctly, all your equipment is ready to go. You're out there racing, and if being in the race is dependent on your internet connection, you better have an internet connection. Like if being in the race is dependent on some things on your side of the equipment that you're coming to the game with, there's just a reality of that part of virtual racing. That's what I was getting at there yeah. was that in the same way that if I'm going to be competitive in any online game, I'm making sure that my equipment's ready to go for it. Yeah, certainly. We're seeing that Scott's sort of done a little bit of a leg shake here off the front. Lots of the riders here getting plenty of ride ons by the look of it, Nathan. You can see Scott's pockets are full up there of little thumbs. So there are plenty of ride ons being given out in this race, too. He's actually off the front a little bit here. Three second gain, actually. Now, look at this. Speaking of pithy, this is mm -hmm. absolutely awesome. Back in the group, 30 mm -hmm. second dropout. I wonder if they. We're kind of a little bit of a gentleman's agreement, or they know maybe Ollie yeah. wasn't pushing the pace. Yeah. But Pithy is back know. in there. That's a huge effort. Regardless if they waited on it, it was still a fair gap. So it looks like Ollie Jones tried to go across there. Also, the way that Scott attacked there was sort of that slow attack. He didn't go into the orange numbers to alert anyone, but we can see Ollie definitely going into the orange numbers to bridge his gap. And now that's fired up the rest of the pack here, Nathan. Yep, and now Smith here, about 10 watts per kilogram as well, comes flying right on by, calms it right on down. Hinton's in there as well. Watch out for him in the sprint. I think Hinton wants a sprint finish for sure, is fairly confident. I've seen him win sprint after sprint out on Zwift here. But now as the rain's kicking off, as they make their way into the uh, final lap here, Hinton now on the front, and the storms are starting, not just in the legs, but also out mm -hmm. on the world of Zwift. We are seeing Scott now 3.7 watts per kilogram on the front now. Chilling it out. Nobody able to get dropped mm -hmm. off just yet. And I think it's going to be all about that final climb. I have a feeling we're going to see some full-on attacks. Yeah. This is a small enough group. Nobody's going to wait. I think those who are climbers are going to try and kick. Yeah, definitely. And anyone out there who's using the Zwift Companion app, definitely give Pithy a ride on for that effort. Uh, so go across the Zwift Companion app and pull out the the, uh, the thumb against uh, Pithy's name and give him a good ride on because that was a solid effort. But it looks like it's all back in here again together, Nathan. It's a nice solid bunch here. I didn't think this bunch would be this big uh, coming into the final, that's for sure. Coming that last lap, it's definitely going to unfold up that climb, Nathan. That's where it's going to be. The power-ups as well will come into play. Who's going to go for that attack? Are they going to use the featherweight power-up or the aero power-up? to try and get a gap or are they going to try and guard that to the end? Yeah, we're looking here and this is a little bit surprising that it's all back together like this. I thought it was going to be the four or five off the front after they got that gap up yeah. on the top of the volcano climb. Obviously some motivation from the riders to get back as well as a little bit of calm from the riders that did get away. But I have a feeling there's some confidence now in those four or five that got away. To drop the rest of the riders and see that they were unable to respond, I think we're going to see a very similar types of attack from these riders up and over the top. I, my predictions here, let's start talking with those predictions. Let's hear it from chat if you have predictions on what's going to happen here for this New Zealand National Championships. Who's going to be the New Zealand National Champion for this year? Out on Zwift, we, are, we know that Penny Pawson, 
predictions across the board, board should be 100%. We are watching her about to make her way across the finish line in probably just the next five minutes or so. So we'll head on over there in just a moment to cross the finish line. But for the men's race, let's hear those predictions. We've got it looks like nine riders or so up toward the front end of this race. Let's go ahead and take a look at our current live positions. Hinton, Jones, Kempton, Shaw, Pithy, Scott, Rooney, C. Smith, all in that lead group. Eight riders up front now. Who is it going to be? Is it going to be Innovation able to pull this off with three riders up toward the front here? Try and pull the, try and pull off some team tactics to get that W for Innovation. Hold on to that jersey for your Ollie, Jones, Pithy. We've seen them working together a little bit. You know, Will Kempton be a dark horse that's actually been sitting in? We've heard C. Smith might be sitting in a whole lot. Who is it going to be? Let's hear it and uh, see if we can get some predictions there coming on through over at chat. And uh, we do see Kyle Augustine jumping in here. This is interesting. Both of the main director sportives from uh, the two main teams that are out there. Vision Cycling is in there a little bit with Ali was riding for them in game prior to the Team Dimension data. You know, I think Pitty's riding alongside with him a little bit today. And then we've got Innovation with Kyle Augustine. So two of them in there definitely chatting with their riders out on course. So Quentin saying prediction vision cycling all day. Got to go with Ollie. And uh, Wes, man, are you giving us a prediction in there? Oh, no, you're saying good morning to Pete. But Wes, you got a prediction out there today? What, what, what have we got here, Wes? Oh, uh, yeah, it's definitely hard to go past Ollie. I mean, uh, he's up at, uh, what is it, one uh, 1.15 a.m. 115. in Italy right now. One fifteen in the morning. Uh, so I can't imagine him staying up that late and going to bed without the W. <laughs> I think but, super motivated. But I must say, I must say, Scott uh, Scott has been impressive as well with these attacks. Um, but then we have Smith, who's been sort of a little bit, like I said, was one of the riders that didn't average too high on the watts. So he may be foxing a little, but it's certainly going to be very hard to go past Ollie Jones. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that, Scott. I think watch out for him. I have a feeling though, if Scott wants to make this happen. He's going to have to do it on the climb. I have a feeling that there might be a stronger sprint coming from Ollie or Hinton when it comes to the line there. But we are seeing Scott again trying to just stretch the legs a little bit, get a leg, get away, but it doesn't look like anything much is going to be happening there. Rooney sitting on the back there from Team Experimental here. Now looking through, it looks like we do have a couple more predictions. Debbie Stahl coming through saying, Ollie, Ollie, Ollie. And then we've got Taryn here as well saying she can't go to sleep. This is great viewing. Thanks a lot, Taryn. Good to see you there. <laughs> Wayne Smith, Lawrence is fast. Very Fast sprint from Lawrence mm -hmm. or Wayne Smith. Quentin Miller the same. Holy smokes. Only 33, 230-watt average by Smith. That's some quality drafting. So, Smith, <laughs> perhaps the one, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked a lot about who's got the best sprint, who's got the, the best, um, what we've seen in just numbers on paper. But we, you know, Quentin's bringing something really important in there that there might be riders who just haven't, used a lot of energy and have a lot left and played this race correctly to outfox those other riders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Like uh, averaging 230 watts is really impressive, especially on this course as well, and having to follow some of those moves too. So definitely uh, some very good drafting. Like uh, it was Quinton that made that comment as well. So it's certainly, uh, it's certainly going to be a, still a tough ask to beat someone like Ollie. But if you've looked after your legs that well the whole way through, then, uh, oh, looks like we're going to go to the finish here, Nathan. She's gone through. So Pawson has uh, now retracted the claws and looks like she has got the big W. Yeah, it looks like Pawson able to take that win. 11 minutes up, actually. This is a huge win, actually, for Penny Pawson. Great job to her out there. Provisional results here, as you can see here, coming on through. Penny Pawson for DBR will be your New Zealand national champion Official, not yet. Just so you know, this is provisional results. Zwift will make official announcements uh, in the uh, week to come or so here. And uh, so, but it looks like Penny most likely taking down that W. Just chilling on the side of the course here, as you can see, basking in the thunderstorm. <laughs> <laughs> basking she in the thunderstorm. She, logging on out, she, taking the W. She's, she's definitely probably uh, looking for a, to jump in a cold shower right now because she'd be uh, pretty warmed up i imagine 
a lot of these riders would have a, a good fan or ventilation system for this sort of race. And uh, probably not just one towel, Nathan. I know you'd probably be well experienced with that. You need at least two towels, probably if not three for this length for of this, race. For this length because, race, yeah. I definitely have like three towels. I would have yeah. the biggest yeah. industrial fan, like like bigger than like three of my heads <laughs> set next mm-hmm. to me here, full on. I would have five gels, three water bottles. I mean, I would, I'd be fully stacked for this race for sure. It would look like a dinner a table longer. with big fans <laughs> and an air conditioner is what it would look and, like. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you'd have some maple syrup going on, you know, some, <laughs> so what, what would you have for recovery after, after an effort like this, Nathan? Uh, I mean, you know, we usually went with the, uh, we usually went with any kind of four to one even up to eight to one, you know, on the, uh, on the, on the carbohydrates, you know, so it was usually a recovery drink. Otherwise it'd be a smoothie, uh, with like two or three bananas, bunch of strawberries, throw in some protein powder and a whole lot of Greek yogurt and honey and be good to go. So that was usually, that's usually what I, but I mean, the smoothie would be like this big. I mean, it'd be the entire blender, entire blender full of smoothie actually. So, Yep. Looking through here, the riders are about to make their way. Final time up on the climb. This is going to be the final climb. We're going to be crowning the Zwift National Champion for the men's side of thing in just a moment. We are seeing some congratulations coming on through over at the Facebook post here. Ian Tuck saying provisional congrats to Penny Pawson. Claire and Simon saying, uh, Whitford saying, Team Innovation, smash it, boys, with some fists and some... Um, Showing the guns off there as well. Pete Donahue is letting us know that he uses four towels, five bottles, and eight gels, and and some rice and strawberry cakes for his recovery after a Zwift race. Now, Shaw at the front here for innovation. Then last time up until the time we saw all the innovation riders except for Smith fall off the back. Smith, amongst these riders, has kept his energy expenditure the lowest. Out of all eight of these riders, actually. So be watching out for Smith, maybe for a rocket off the front, perhaps, if he does have the energy to do it. We'll have to wait and see if it's going to pay off all the sitting in. Or has he just been following wheels and faking it to make it here, Wes? There is always that question. Mm -hmm. There is. There is that question as well. But um, we'll certainly find out when it gets to the pointy end of that climb. That last part of the climb is certainly where the fire is going to go down. Or is it maybe someone else is going to attack early on and try and do the long range because uh, they're worried that they won't be able to go with the likes of Ollie if he does unleash on that climb. Yeah, we are seeing another prediction coming on through here from Fiverr actually over at the uh, over at the Mixer channel saying that he thinks Ollie's going to win as well. So speaking of Ollie Jones there, you know, I think the kick from him is the one that everybody's going to kind of be watching for. You know, everybody knows that he's Team Dimension Data. They know the kind of power that he's got. We saw that he was the instigator up and over the top of the climb last time alongside of Scott. So those two kind of made things happen last time. They might just be waiting to respond to him and counter that. You know, there's always the tactics that play out. When you were on climbs like this, what was your usual interaction on these kind of situations? How would you usually play it out? What's usually the smartest way to come at a climb like I mean, this it- to make it happen? Well, definitely, if you're the strongest rider, you'd be uh, you'd be pretty confident, obviously, to try and make a move yourself. But even even doing so, you know, if like someone, let's say, if I was Ollie Jones, I wouldn't probably be attacking at the bottom of the climb. That's for sure. You know, maybe maybe uh, if anyone does attack early on, to go with that and sort of respond to show that you know you can respond quickly. And then if you wanted to, you could lay the boots in a little bit, just a little bit of a dig, and then back in again. You're definitely waiting for that last part of the climb to attack. You know, if I was Ollie, I'd wait, you know, till uh, till I was confident the last part of the climb, you know, maybe with the last last K or two K, really just snap it over the top. And the biggest thing about Nathan is is once you establish that gap as well, is uh you know, the, the climb is going to establish the gap really quickly. But on the downhill, it, it, it will come into effect as well. If some of the other riders get together, they get that sort of bunch effect. So that means that you have to go really hard quite uh, over the top of the climb and on the downhill. So that locking into TT mode uh, after the climb, especially if you're solo, is really important. So the climb is important, but you're going to have to go just as hard on the downhill as well. Yeah, it's a great point actually about um, being able to lock it in there when to go, very important. The last 2K, I have to agree with you 100 percent there that you're gonna wait. You're gonna want people to be on edge, and not because 
when you do throw down into, you know, when you do throw down any kind of attack, there, you know, you hit a certain number where it's like you've only got so many of those matches to burn. You know, there, you hit yeah, a certain, yeah. and, and if you burn too many of those matches too early and then can't be consistent, people can ramp it up to a certain amount of pace to bring you back in, and they've still got all those matches to burn. So it is going to be all about timing here and then holding on up over the top. I think we are going to see some attacks over the top here. I have a feeling that it's not going to be all about the sprint finish. A lot of these riders aren't going to want to be taking the risk for the sprint. Looking through here, we are seeing a, quite a few more comments actually in predictions here. Matt Yanko is saying he's going with Smith. And uh, Kyle Augustine saying, no, Smith's not going to rock it. Uh, away from the riders here, actually. So maybe just waiting in for the sprint. And uh, Ian Tuck saying, hey, guys, not too familiar. I'm going to go ahead and bring this one actually in as it is a question. And Ian Tuck saying, not too familiar with these types of races. As they do this last climb, do they all have identical trainer difficulty settings or is it their own preference? It's definitely their own preference. Actually, it's a great question because we do have GP Llama coming on in mm. to the broadcast here. She actually did a uh, video specifically on that question just recently on his YouTube channel, GP over on GP Llama's YouTube channel, and uh, showing identical wattage and power output all the way up to the top of uh, a climb that had about the same time up to the top, and that power is power. And so there, it is just preference, but the riders do still have to produce the same amount of power uh, on their, cal you know, assuming calibrations are correct, um, it is just a preference there. So no problem on answering that question, though, there, Ian. And uh, thanks a lot for the question. Rooting for Rooney, Renee is saying. But we are seeing attacks now, and it is, it looks like 10 seconds off the back for Shaw. So Shaw unable to hang on. Innovation already dropping one off. Kempton then again. These riders, it looks like we're just hanging on till this point here. But Rooney, who was being cheered for there from Rene Rolliga, looks like he's just trying to hang on at this point. But it is Scott here, 6.7 watts per kilogram, trying to get away now. And it looks like a couple of more predictions coming on through. Tony Gibson said, in real life, Smith isn't the same league as Pithy or Jones. So we'll have to see if that is going to play out actually here between the rest of the riders actually. So a couple more predictions coming on through. And uh, it does look like a lot are saying it is going to either be Jones or Smith across the line. But the gaps are starting to form. Look at how it's strung out here. You know things are difficult, Wes, mm -hmm. when it strings out like this, when riders are just trying to hold on to that wheel directly in front of them. When it's strung out, that usually means the pace mm -hmm. is pretty high. Yeah, if they're all bunched up and next to each other, then you know, the pace is known. But when they're strung out like this, you can see the riders like in that sort of the, that – you know, as you would say, uh, stretched out, you know, tiramon in French. These riders now uh, have the watts down, 400 watts here on the front by Scott. Also, as we were chatting, Nathan, as you were talking about some of the tactics into play there, I did uh, notice that Scott just did that same sort of effect of his attack. He just didn't go into the orange, just sort of increased the wattage and slowly got a little bit of a gap. Uh, and then once he established that gap, he started to lay on the watts, and that's when Ollie Jones started to respond. So trying to do a little bit of a sneaky sort of uh, off the Ooh. attack. One what? person that... Nine that, watts per kilogram? Oh, oh Ollie Jones. Ollie, Ollie, this is it. Giving a kick that, about halfway up to the top. You can see in the upper right-hand corner, there is the climb profile. Half a climb to go here. That's about a three-and-a-half-minute effort or so, three-minute effort. That's a long ways to go. Trying to really take advantage, maybe, of the gap that's formed on Hinton. I think they don't want innovation involved. No, I don't think they want the uh, want the teammates to be able to gather together there. So Ollie is laying the boots in here, and we saw those orange numbers certainly fly up there really quickly. So Ollie is not wanting uh, anyone to gang up on him here. He wants uh, wants to be even playing field for him coming into that final. Definitely. We are seeing Pithy now falling off there. 5.4 watts per kilogram. Smith now 4.9. As you can see, Ali now 6.1 at the front now. Up and out of the saddle for the Avatar. 485 watts. Racing out of Italy tonight, man. It is 1.30 a.m. for Ali, and he is looking for his national championship kit out on Swift. But Aiden Scott... 4.9 watts per kilogram. Hey, non. C. Smith is in there as well. 3.7. And they start looking at each other four seconds back. Now, this time around, we're I'm not going to see. I don't think we're going to see the closing of the gap the same way. They're going to be motivated to hold on to it. 
I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty uh, interested to know, uh, as we have a little bit of a debrief later after this, to know what Ollie's uh, housemates are thinking of him hand- huffing and puffing at 1am <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> looks like we have got a race to the line here, Nathan. The power is still being laid down. Scott here is also following the wheel of Ollie here. Looks like Ollie's pulling a gap again here now over that 500 watt mark, nearly at 190 heart rate. So all the way to the top here. Looks like these three riders are going to go over the top together, Nate. Looks like that, that uh, Scott is going to hold on here, and uh, these three riders are going to have to battle this out. And after we get over this climb, Nathan, again, it's going to be important, even though these other riders are dropped behind, it's going to be important that they push on on the downhill. It's only 10 seconds back to Pithy. Rooney, who's got a consistent effort, I know that for sure. I've raced against him many times out on Zwift. I'd be watching out for him to hang on to a solid effort all the way to the line, so you're correct. It's going to have to be a fairly high pace all the way into the sprint. We might see a few riders able to get back on terms. Only 33 seconds back to Hinton. There is a little bit of a climbing yet to go here, so we'll have to see it, what it goes out to, though. But Scott here, 6.9 watts per kilometer on the front. Jones now just hanging on 190 189 beats per minute. Smith there, 170, or excuse me, 192, 5.9 watts per kilogram. One last kick. Can they get the gap that they want from each other here? 10% gradient. There it is. 10 watts per kilogram from Ollie Jones. 700 watts to try wow. and get away. He opens up a gap. It's out to five meters. Now Smith trying to close it down. He knows this is the moment. Scott now, 6.5. Diggity done. Scott is no longer on the wheel, it looks like here. Ollie Jones with a 620 over the top. Smith with the continuance. They see the gap is there. He's got to get away at this point, though. They have to continue on, or it might come back together. Two riders on the front. Does Ollie have continuance? 3.5 watts per kilogram from Smith, now 5.3, as you can see. Ollie's getting a little bit of a gap. It's five meters for those Ollie, who are unfamiliar Ollie. at the bottom. Go oh. ahead, Swift. Go ahead, Ollie, <laughs> Unleashed on that ten percent part of the climb, there dropped it on. Looks like Scott is going to make it back to the group here now. So three riders going to come back together by the looks of it, and uh, Ollie is certainly laid it down on that one. And that was just incredible to watch. It was like it was the the sprint finish there, the way they are dropping the watts in the ten watts per kilo range there. So three riders together now over the top. Now, as I said, it looks like they're going to keep working pretty hard here. The heart rates are still mighty high. A little bit of a downhill freewheel there by all the riders actually taking advantage of that. A little bit of a rest. And I'm hoping uh, that these riders will will battle it out for a three-up sprint, I'm sure. that uh, I'm sure probably I will see an attack, probably sneaky attacks again, Nathan, by Scott. Sort of up in the watts, sort of in, a, in an area where uh, it's unexpected. And then getting that little bit of a gap and then laying down the watts after that. But I'm sure Ollie has noticed that a couple of times now and responded very quickly. So I, I think they're awake up to it. And these riders, I'm very sure now, will come to a sprint finish. Definitely some favorites out here today. We do see Gus Marfell saying, let's go, Ari. Ali, go, man, from Janine Jones. And then we got Joshua Sher with the thumbs up. Big move coming here uh, in the chat there, Matt Yanko. And uh, Johnny now that's letting say, poor Ollie, it's only almost 2 a.m. Uh, but he's definitely putting the herd on. I think poor Ari and Smith at this point as they <laughs> had to chase down some serious efforts. They're all the riders almost up to 200 beats per minute here. And it looks like we are going to have a three-up sprint. Pithy, though, has not thrown in the towel just yet. Arrow Power Up actually wants to get uh, involved nice. in the finish. The other oh. thing here, Wes, we have not seen any power-ups. From those no, other riders, that was, that's, none. That is the first. That's the first power up we've seen, actually. Even though some of the riders that were getting dropped uh, hadn't. Did, I, I, if I was one of those riders getting dropped, you, you would probably want to use that power up just to stay with the bunch. It's always nice to finish with the front bunch, but we didn't see any of that now. But Pithy's decided to unleash that aero power up, the strongest uh, power up in game, to try and close that gap back to the front leaders. Exactly. You know, I think uh, Pithy might be able to get back on terms with this kind of speed, actually. 63 kilometers per hour, now 20 seconds back. It's going to be quite the effort. Probably yeah. have wasted too much in order to have it, but, um, you know, we'll have, to, we'll have to wait and see if he can get back on. If he does, though, I don't know if he's going to have the sprint to contend. It's going to be really difficult. Uh, looking through yeah, on the sprint stats. You- Go ahead. You would, you, would, you would say that maybe if he does get back on, his only only defense would be to attack. He'd have to attack, just go straight through. And then obviously the riders would know that he's just got back on. 
and he probably isn't going to stay away the line, but you just have to go for it. I mean, if I was if I was him, that's that would be my method. Just attack. just go right through him. Just <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm just yeah. not even messing around. This like, here, look at like this. A, this is insane. Quick, very quick. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, Rooney as well. Attack, These guys he, have slowed down and started looking back. at each other, Wes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I said that Nathan that they'd have to push hard on the downhill here to establish that gap because that's where these other riders, uh, you know, obviously probably just rode to the limit there, which looked like they rode the hardest tempo at their threshold they could, and these other riders have kept in mind that the downhill does come into a big effect if you push on the downhill really hard. And building that avatar, I've uh, plugged you once on this before, Nathan, about building that speed up as you get over the top of the climb. So as you get over the top of the climb. Get out and do that little sprint uh, and then wind your avatar up like you would at the top of a climb in the real world on, on top of a climb. In the virtual world as well, if you wind up that avatar, get him up to speed, he'll nail it down the downhill and he knows how to descend, don't they, Nathan? All the avatars seem to know how to descend like demons. This is true. This is true. They, uh, you know, There might be a little weight advantage too there. It's almost all back together. I didn't think we were going to see this. Pithy, he did it. He went right on through. He did it. What? What is going on? They gave him a 10 second gap. This is it. This is for a national championship. 5.3 watts per kilogram. And Pithy just rode right on through him. Rooney's there. Smith is there. Ollie Jones, Ari Scott. They don't have anything left in the tank. They're just looking at him. Or wait, does Ollie want to give it to Pithy? Is that what's going on here? Does he not want to chase down his friend? But Jay Rooney, what is Rooney doing there? 5.1 watts per kilogram. Team Experimental is coming through. What is going on? This race is all over the place. Left and right. Everything's changing constantly out on course. Pithy, 6.3 watts per kilogram on the front. He's got a gap. Can he hold on to it? But it's pulled back in, it looks like. No, 11 seconds. It was just a little bit of a difference from that right-hand turn, so it didn't Show the time gap 6.4 this is for national championship jersey 11 wow. seconds that he's almost out of sight what is going through your mind if you're 11 seconds for a national championship wes 11 oh seconds and pithy you'll be just absolutely just giving it everything now and you and you are definitely committed you're not looking back you know you're not checking what what's coming behind you now you're not trying to look at that time gap you're just laying everything you have left Take your, put both hands in the cookie jar and whatever you can pull out, then that's what you're going to get. So Pithy here, as uh, hopefully I'm 16. sure you must be listening to the live stream. It just he's, keeps he's, going he's, out. He's the live stream. I'm sure he's listening to the live stream because that tactic has worked straight for him. I'm, I'm going to take, if he wins this, I'm going to take the a little bit of the, the claim of that win because he's served that tactics and followed to a T straight through like a steam train. <sighs> Just right on through, and it looks and like, what's the, look at this. What's the chat there? Scott saying what is something the chat? The chat there, Two Skoda, and then we've got something about three innovation. I don't I don't know. They're, 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 all, they're all chatting a little bit about, you know, we're starting to get the arms thrown in the air, like, what the heck? Do some work. What is going on over here? Nobody's able to do it. He's pulling away. Six watts per kilogram, 205 beats per minute. This boy is absolutely beaten like a butterfly up and out of the saddle now and it looks like he might wow. be winning this national championship smith says that's enough 10 watts per kilogram i'm not losing this ollie's like i'm following this is a team tactic ollie is not chasing oh, down his teammate that's what's no, going on here no. you can see it you can see it was that he he's not going after it unless somebody goes yeah, that's incredible that, uh, you know, someone, uh, Ollie's up at almost 2 a.m. in the morning and uh, and is, is going to let someone else take the championship. I thought Ollie would be just fighting out tooth or nail and taking it on for himself. But it looks like he's good friends, obviously, uh, with the rider out in front now. Pithy is going to go on and maybe take this win. Nathan's going to come right down the wire. What have we got left in kilometre count to go now? Only like K to, K to go coming up soon, though. Yeah, it's about a K to go. It's 68.4 total. Actually, well, I think that might be a little bit off, actually, from what I'm seeing here, because I know we do have a little bit more, I believe, than that to go half a K. Maybe it is just a half a K to the finish line here, but I think there's just a little bit more than that. But we are within the final K and a half or so, I believe. And Pithy only has three seconds, actually. This might be timed perfectly. Look oh, at wow. this these gap. Coming down Ollie's coming back. Out. Oh, this is going to be tight. 
This is it. This is it right here. Two seconds. Arrow power-ups might be able to close it down, but Pithy has to have a huge kick all the way to the line. 7.2 watts per kilogram coming from Pithy now. Will he be able to hang on to it? 8.4, as you can see. Smith, now it's 22 seconds. After. He's got it. It's all said and done. They let him sit out there too long. The race is for second place. See Smith with that arrow power-up, but Pithy with 25 seconds on the downhill comes right on by. 10.2 two watts per kilogram. We can see Smith here trying to make it happen, but 24 seconds up. It's not going to be enough. Pithy is going to be your New Zealand national champion. Now 21 seconds back. Ari Scott, but it's not going to happen for Ari as we do see El Pithy here able to get the W. The boys behind here in just a moment, but Ali Jones now kicking here. It looks like a little bit. We're going to try and get him in the zone. It looks like Ali just coming right on through now. Going to be able to take that second place. Solid result there for Ali. And right behind him, I believe it was Rooney or Smith. We'll have to take a look at the replay. But solid effort there from the riders yeah. all around. National Championships provisional results here. Let's go ahead and take a quick little look. We are seeing Pithy with the average there. It looks like 310 watts. Ali Jones coming through second. Seven seconds back. It was close. If it was only 15 seconds, mm -hmm. it wasn't going to happen. Ali yeah, was, almost it was, was right there. It was, that, it was just that little bit, a little bit too far. That 20 seconds is, yeah, you know, coming into into a K to go. When I, I've been in situations like that on Swift races, that yeah, 20 seconds is probably you, you say you got it safe. If you're getting towards that 15 or under 15 seconds, then you probably got to get rolled on the line. But Pithy, what a ride off the back, off the front, and for the W able to take it down here. Let's take a quick little look at the replay here as the riders were coming to the line. There is Pithy up in that 710 watt. 210 beats per minute. Absolutely flying to the line. Solid effort there from Pithy and it was going to be Ali Jones coming through the cross in second I believe. We'll take a look at uh, what the sprint was like between those riders as well but Pithy with the gamble, able to take it down. And then it was right behind him, Ari Scott. So solid results all around from those riders. One, two, and three, El Pithy, Ollie Jones, and Ari Scott. Great racing out on Zwift there. Also for the women, it was Penny Pawson there for first, for those who did miss that. And then El Dolly and Jay Hamilton for BRT Hellcats for third place on the day. Big racing out there out on Zwift, Wes. Amazing, it amazing is, job definitely. for the New Zealand riders. Definitely a great, uh, a great race for everyone involved there. Everyone had a, certainly a solid race. The women's race was also pretty tough out there. Uh, all of them sort of doing a team time trial into effect. And there was a few little time trials out there, and certainly Pithy had a time trial at the end there, off the back, off the front. But all in all, I'm sure all these races will be pretty pleased with their efforts. Everyone give it their all, and it certainly made for an interesting race. So Lawrence Pithy here, like yeah, outstanding race. People are asking how old is uh, is Lawrence? Not sure. That's a great question. Actually, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, Two hundred and eleven beats per minute, though. I mean, now these are pro provisional results. Just so everybody knows, mm -hmm. we will um, wait for the official results to come through um, from Zwift. They will be announced. I believe through all of the social medias. So amazing work though. Great job to everybody. We got 18 minutes to the start of the Australian national championships. Make sure not to miss those. We'll be back with those in uh, about eight to 10 minutes from now. So make sure to head on over. You're watching on Facebook, yeah. head on over to the Facebook uh, post for that. If you're watching on Mixer, Twitch or YouTube, we will be restarting the stream and be back in about 10 minutes. Wes, you're going to be joining me for that along with a couple of guests, it sounds like? Yeah, okay, I'm looking out now in the headquarters here. I can see uh, your GP Lama, Shane Miller's here, and Pat Shaw as well. So it'd be great to get a little bit of insight, knowledge from both of those two. Very experienced Swift uh, racers and very famous YouTuber for the Swift community. Yeah, it'd be great. All right, everybody, we'll see you in about 10 minutes for Australian National Championships out on Zwift. Congratulations to all the riders. Great to see all the viewers out there chatting away and don't go anywhere for the next race. Awesome.